Hello, RF 110's Maureen Curry getting back to you again. We're beginning week five this week. Uh, will be the art of ancient Greece. Uh, so why is the art of ancient Greece so important? Well, for all the foundation of Western art, literature, politics, philosophy, and science, the ancient Greek culture had a very strong uh, influence on how we structure our society, how we build architecture, how we do sculpture, so there's a lot of strong influence from the Greeks. Ancient Greece is divided into uh, different stylistic periods based on the characteristics of the architecture and the sculpture we'll find, as well as the time periods. So the major stylistic periods were the geometric or orientalizing period where uh, forms are very stylized, very uh, geometric. The archaic period figures were still very uh, rigid and stiff. And then when you move to the early classical period, you're starting to see the figure being modeled, more muscles showing, um, uh, more naturalism. Uh, when you go to the uh, classical period, forms are definitely um, more uh, natural, more modeling of the form, more shift in the body weight, uh, more sense of movement. And then when you're in the Hellenistic period, the figures are over the top modeled, uh, idealized, idealized muscle, muscles in action, very much dynamic action. The Greek uh, called themselves the Hellenists. Um, so we'll look at Greek architecture this week. We'll research the Doric and Ionic temples. Later on, you'll see the Corinthian order coming in as well. Uh, as far as the Greek temple architecture, you need to learn the terms for the different uh, architectural elements in general. Most of the temples were four sides of columns supporting the roof. Remember, we still have the post and lintel set up with two posts and then a uh, a beam uh, or lintel across the top. So the peristyle uh, temples were surrounded by columns. You entered from a, a porch called a proneos and then in the center was a solid room where the uh, the naos or where the cult statue was kept. Only the priests and certain hierarchy of the echelon of uh, whoever was allowed inside the temples could go into the cult statue space. So please go over the PowerPoint presentation in chapter in module five uh, and review the Doric and Ionic orders and know all the terms of the different elements and know the characteristics of each of these temples. Um, so classical Greek temple architecture was very important. The Doric order um, normally had uh, sort of uh, cigar shaped columns that had a, a cushion kind of cap on the top. And then the Ionic order, the columns were more slender and the, the capitals on the top had scrolls or volutes. So that's how you can tell the difference. Um, the space within the uh, temple was a rectangular space, a basilica plan we call it. So once again, this is a peripteral, peripteral temple surrounded by columns. And in the center was the cella or the place where the cult statue would be kept. In this case, what you see this, the little dots mean that even in the center of the roof are held up by more columns. Uh, since the facade of temples had were shaped like a triangle um, and the Greeks wanted to display the stories of their gods, uh, they had to solve the problem of how to get these narratives in these triangular spaces on the fronts of their temples. And sometimes you got some kind of quirky, uh, misshapen or out of proportion figures. And so that was one of the um, artistic uh, conventions they had to solve. Um, so this is an Ionic order um, temple. Some temples were called treasuries. They were still dedicated to the gods. In this case, this is a non peripteral temple. You can see the sides do not have columns. They're solid. But do note that the columns holding up the uh, porch, in this case, are figures of women. Remember, it's still a post and lintel construction with columns supporting the beam or the lintel. And these uh, columns that are figures of women are called caratids. And then you see in the triangular pediment you would see stories of the life of the gods and battles of the gods and then also around the frieze would be more stories of the gods. Um, so you can see they had to get these stories about their gods on the temple. 
Vase painting was another important uh, element of Greek art. Uh, vases were used to store oil, grains, um, used as decorative objects. They were considered very valuable. They were traded. And also they were given as um, rewards for Olympic Games. Uh, there was two different main types of vase painting. There was others, uh, other one later. So you had the black figure and the red figure. And later you'll see white figure. So the black figure painting, you can see, uh, made the figures uh, have black slip and then the red figure the clay was left unpainted. Um, so the vases were very important. There's more examples of the black figure painting. This is a very important vase here of two gods playing dice. So it's a black figure uh, painting style vase. Um, sometimes the vase painting could have two different styles on one vase. On one side you could have the black figure painting and on the other, you'd have a red figure painting. So black figure, um, this is called a bilingual style vase. So no vase painting um, and no the classical temple architectural elements of ancient Greece. Uh, be prepared for the discussion board and the written assignment this week. And also remember, you have to make a visit to uh, art museum. I know San Diego Art Museum is open. Please find some objects of art that are um, uh, made before 1500 ideally would be good. There's, I know there's a, a pharaoh statue. I know there's some Asian peach pieces that are quite old in there. So it, um, it takes a little effort to find them. I know there's some early Renaissance paintings in there. So do your best and hopefully you can find a museum in your area and, and work on that this week. So I will be seeing you on Canvas. Best of luck.